Hi guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and today we're going to be taking a look at what I'm currently reading and what I've read recently, and just kind of brief thoughts on where my reading's at and what's pulling my attention right now. Um, but before we get into that, I have two quick kind of housekeeping business pieces of... Off to a winning start here. First, I have a survey over on my blog that is um, kind of helping me shape where I want to go with things and giving me ideas of what I can improve on, what I should bring back, what you guys like to see. So if you could, I would love if you could fill that out. It's really quick. Um, a lot of it is just multiple choice filling in the little bubble and then you can give feedback if you want and I will leave that link below. Thank you in advance for filling it out. And number two, April is supposed to be the next 30 day book binge. We missed January because I just completely forgot. Um, that seems to be a theme. And I was on the fence about whether to continue with it because I feel like not a lot of people post about it so I don't really feel like people, or I didn't really feel like people were participating or finding it useful. And then in the survey so far so many people are like, please keep doing 30 day book binge because it really helps even if I don't post about it. So I thought we would go ahead and keep doing it. Now normally I give a set of printables for you guys to use and I do still want to do that but because I'm deciding very last minute to go ahead and continue with this, um, they might be up late. So I'm going to try to cobble something together. If you have suggestions of what you'd like to see for the little printable pack, let me know. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and declare April a 30 day book binge month. So if you're unfamiliar, I'll leave the link below to all of the previous ones so you can kind of familiarize yourself. But basically it's just a super low pressure reading challenge where the goal is to read something every day for 30 days you decide what, you decide how much, totally up to you. And then you can encourage each other and um, get encouragement with the hashtag 30 day book binge on social media. You can share what you're reading, things like that. Um, and then I give some printables to kind of keep it exciting. So that's that. I'm not going to do a whole video about it this time because I feel like I've done that enough, but I'll leave it linked and the post will go live on the first all about it. And uh, I hope you'll join me really really great for habit building. But for now let's go ahead and get into what I'm currently reading and what I really could use the push on. 30 day book binge might be perfect for this because I'm struggling a little bit to get through the things that I'm reading. So I'm going to kick it off with the only physical book that I'm reading at the moment, though I want to change that, and that is The Woodwife by Terry Windling. Now I don't know why this is kind of feeling like a little bit of a slog to me because I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with it, and I don't think in the past that I would have had an issue, so maybe it's just my mood right now, but I, I feel a little bit of a disconnect, and I'll probably go into that more when I end up reviewing it, but even though I like it when I'm reading it, it's fine. As soon as I put it down, I just don't feel compelled to pick it up again, and I think there are a few reasons why that is. So if any of you have read this and you want to tell me if it picks up for you, if you were having the same issues, or whether you think it's just my mood at the time, um, I would love to hear your thoughts. But I was really excited for it. Um, I love her anthology work. She's an editor of a lot of really popular science fiction and fantasy anthologies that have I've loved since I was a teenager. So we're talking a couple decades now. They've helped me find a lot of authors that I maybe wouldn't have picked up otherwise, and I still think of some of those short stories as some of my favorites. So I love the work that she does along with Ellen Datlow on those anthologies, and I was really looking forward to seeing what she, you know, brings to the table in her own writing, but I just... I'm on the fence. So I'm gonna try to push through this one. But like I said in the last video, I'm becoming a lot more ruthless with my DNFs, so if it doesn't start drawing me in, like, hard soon, I might have to give up. Just sad. Everything else I'm reading is digital, which has been a theme for me for a while now. I'm trying to break myself of it. I have all of those back there that I'm just ignoring and I need to be reading, so... <sighs> I think we need to have a book chat about that sometime soon and just the um kind of changing reading styles and habits and where my head is at lately but everything else I'm reading or listening to on my phone. I was trying not to start anything else because I wanted to finish The Woodwife and I don't need excuses to keep putting it off but it just didn't happen because a Jane austen friend Christina Boyd who edits 
I have hair and it's driving me nuts. Where is it? I'm never gonna get it and it's just gonna drive me insane and this is how I live now. Anyway, <laughs> Christina Boyd, who edits a bunch of Austin anthologies, had messaged me about um, an author who is in one of the anthologies and a new book that she had written. And I was like, you know, I've never read anything full length by her. I've only read the short stories from the anthologies. And I really, really enjoyed uh, the last one that was in Yuletide, I want to say, was the one that I just was obsessed with. Anyway. I loved it and I was like, why am I not? I have a habit of reading the same Austin S. authors over and over. And I was like, why am I not like trying some of these other authors? Partly it's because I've been burned in the past because there's a lot of bad fan fiction out there. Um, but from these anthologies, I've read some really great short stories, which bodes well for the books that they would write. Long story short, <laughs> she told me that she loves the full length books by this particular author and I was trying not to pick up any more Regency romance or Austin-esque fiction at the time because I had just like only been reading that and I was afraid I was going to burn myself out and I was also making me put off everything else. So I tried. I tried to resist but I couldn't and I'm so glad that I didn't. And I don't think I ever would have picked this one up based on the cover because I'm a cover snob. I am. I just am. I can admit that about myself. But anyway, the book that she was talking about was Ardently by Caitlin Williams, and so I went ahead. It was on um, Kindle Unlimited, which I had a free trial of, and currently have a free trial of, and so much information that you don't need. I went ahead and picked it up and devoured it. I just loved it. It was very different, I think, from other retellings that I've read. Uh, I, I just, I ate it up. So then I went straight into <laughs> another book by her that was on Kindle Unlimited. And this one's called The Coming of Age of Elizabeth Bennet, and I loved this one too. I think this one will probably be a love or hate for people just because of the way it deals with the story of Lizzie and Darcy and some of the things that happen. I think some people might find Darcy irredeemable in this, but again, I think it's very different from what's out there. It's very complex. I think she dealt with things in really interesting ways, and it's discussion worthy. Like I think if I end up doing Austin in August this year, I will definitely be talking about this book and maybe even encouraging like a group read of it because I'm really curious to see what other people say and I think it would be great for discussion. So I just, you know, I went down a Jane Austen rabbit hole once again, which led me to one of my current reads, which is A Willful Misunderstanding by Amy DeRazio. I have had her on the blog. I have read short stories by her, but again, I don't think I had read a full length. Maybe I did read one full length book by her and I feel like I did. Whatever the case, I enjoyed things that I've read by her in the past, so I was like, I'm gonna pick up more by her. And I have liked and disliked this at the same time. Um, it definitely has some issues for me, and it's flawed, okay? It is from a storytelling aspect, from the kind of easiness of the conflicts and the resolutions. Um, it's got some big pet peeves for me, but it was still enjoyable at the same time. And I'm saying was, like I've read the whole thing when I haven't, because I'm at like the 91% mark and I kind of feel like I'm done with it. <laughs> I don't feel like there's more I need from it. So I'm trying to tell myself like just push through and read that last 10%. You never know what's going to happen and it's silly not to, but at the same time, I feel like I've made my peace with it. So it's sort of a currently reading <laughs> and sort of not. Now again, I was trying to limit myself just to that, just to my one physical book to read during the day, my one ebook to read at night, and not pick up anything else because my god, like how much do I really need to have going at one time? But as I mentioned in the last video, I really like to listen to an audiobook before bed while I play Stardew Valley, so I needed an excuse. And I went and got on Hoopla to see what all was available. Lainey Taylor had just been talking about The Thief, and I thought I would go ahead and pick that up, and I started it, and I, I feel like it's the narrator. I don't know what it was, but I could not get into this. I feel like it's up my alley. I think I would like it. So many people I know love it, but I don't know. I don't know if it was my mood, or I don't know if it was just not loving the narrator. It's really hard. 
with an audiobook if you don't love the narrator to keep going. So if you've read this and loved it, let me know. If you listen to it on an audiobook and had issues with the narrator but still thought the story was great, also let me know that. So this one's kind of on the back burner. In fact, it returned because I just wasn't picking it up. And instead, the other night, I downloaded Send Me Their Souls by uh, Sarah Wolf. I don't think it'll let me expand. No, it won't. So that's my current Stardew Valley listen. This is the third book and final book in the Bring Me Their Hearts series, which I really enjoy. I'm having narrator issues with this one a little bit too. I think that she's a, a very uninteresting narrator, I hate to say. Sorry to M. Eldridge. But uh, I'm not loving her narration style and kind of wish that I was reading this in a physical book instead of listening to it. But, you know, it's something for my Stardew binges. So we'll see if I stick with this one. I might end up just downloading another of the million Regency romances that I keep trying to tell myself that I need to take a break from and save that one for when I can get my hands on a physical copy. I don't know. We'll see. So that's my current reads, those three, um, with some like hits and misses that have been set aside as well. And then as far as other things that I've read this year, um, I listened to... Shades of Milk and Honey, finally, because that's been recommended to me so many times. And I have other books in the series, but I don't have this one, which was stupid on my part, because this is the first book. Although maybe you can read them on their own, I don't know. But I'm so glad, actually, that I ended up listening to this in audiobook, because I thought it was so well done. It's read by the author, and aside from a couple of, like, weird pronunciation things that she does in her um, attempts to sound British, which she actually does, I think, pretty good job at. I thought she nailed it. I thought she did a really, really good job, and it conveyed the mood, and I really wish that the rest of this series as an audiobook was available on Hoopla, because even though I own the other books, I would listen to them on audio. Um, I went through a whole Tessa Dare binge and read a bunch of the Spindle Cove books. I'll just list them below. I liked them, all of them that I read, and my favorite might have been Any Duchess Will Do. I don't know, because the names don't necessarily tell you what the book is about, you know? It's just a Regency romance, cutesy name. And they all really blend together, honestly. Um, but I like them all. I also tried to read The Other Miss Bridgerton by Julia Quinn, which is the first book in the spin-off to the Bridgerton books that the series is based on, the Netflix series. Um, I really, really actively disliked this. I mean... Okay, partly, it's not that bad. That was kind of dramatic. I just didn't think it was great. Like, the premise of it, even, was just <laughs> kind of fucked. But there was, like, zero chemistry for me with these two. Like, I just did not care about them. So I gave up. I was, like, halfway through, and I was like, this is not worth my time. I also tried to read the first issue of Abbott, uh, which is a comic, um which I was really excited to find out was set in Detroit. I didn't realize that going in, and I love when things are local, but, and it's not, this is not knocking this comic at all because I think it's probably going to be really interesting, but it just wasn't suiting my mood because I feel like it's going to go really dark and really weird, which is normally something that I love, <laughs> but there are times when I just can't have it, you know? Like, I just, I want my mind happy <laughs> and to be in, like, a joyful, a uplifted place and not like a blood and gore and um, weird creepy monsters place and that was where this was going. So I ended up letting this one expire too, but I think I'll probably go back to it at some point. Have I read anything else worth mentioning? Well, let's see. Um, oh, if you want me to do like a walkthrough of my bullet journal so far this year, because I'm loving it, I would gladly do that. So let me know if you guys would like to see what I'm kind of up to and how I'm um, how I'm putting things together this year, but anyway, I did a book spread to track what I'm reading this year, and I think I probably mentioned most things. Oh, I read some other Jane Austen-y stuff. Um, I'll probably save that for a later post, possibly in August. Oh, Call Me Maybe by Cara Bestone. Let me see if I can find that. That was on Audible. Oh, we'll go to the cover. Oh, hi, buddy. How you doing? You gonna go in the cat cave? You looking for catnip? It's in here? What's in here? You haven't said hi in a long time. Why don't you come here? Oh, my baby! Oh, I know it. Objection. 
Say hi to the people. Say hi to your adoring public. You don't care. You don't even care. I also listened to Call Me Maybe by Cara Bastone on Audible. This is an audiobook written specifically for audiobooks, like the format. Um, it's meant to be listened to, and I at first was like, I don't know how this is gonna work. I mean, I've read other things that were written specifically for audio, but the way this is presented, which is the whole romance, the whole getting to know you all of it, takes place over the course of a service call um, with kind of no breaks, like just talking back and forth between these two characters. And I was really thinking this is probably gonna get old fast. It didn't. It was so, so good. It was so funny. It was like charming. It was clever. The two characters had great chemistry. I thought the narration of the two actors was fantastic. I loved this and I want more of it. I want more like it. I want more things written specifically for audio because it worked. Super fun. If you're looking for like a nice, charming, wholesome, but not in like a cloying way, but just like feel good romance, recommend. I just sounded so Midwestern. I know I am, but romance? <laughs> that was bad. Hey, get off my bullet journal, man. I love you so much. And I think that is probably it. At least that's all I've written down, so if I read anything else I didn't log it. So that is how my year is shaping up so far. I don't know where I'm going from here. Um, I mentioned in the last video that I am not really taking review books. It's still tempting. I still get so many good like emails that made me want to say yes, but as I'm finding with this, this really made me want to say yes too, and I'm kind of regretting it. Not because I don't regret saying yes, and I don't regret trying it, but I think part of the issue that I'm having is I just don't want to feel obligated right now to read anything. So I'm trying to avoid review books. It's so hard. But I am not really reading them, and I've got all of that back there, <laughs> which I am obviously have read some of it, but plenty of it I have not. And I've got such a long list of books that I've been wanting to read. Whoa! Whoa. It's okay, baby. He didn't even get you. It's okay. Why are you pink? Oh, I kissed you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Basically, I'm just saying I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be reading next. I don't know if I want to plan it out in any way. As I said, I love making plans. I also love breaking them. So, I don't know. If you have suggestions, I think what I really want to do, maybe I should save this for another video, but what I really want to do is have people recommend books to me that they don't think I would pick up on my own. Because I think I maybe need a shake up. So, I don't know. If that seems like something you'd like to see, like a whole month of me reading things that I didn't choose, let me know and maybe we'll do that soonish. But that is all for this video. I hope you guys will join me for a 30 day book binge and I also really hope that you will fill out that feedback form because it is really helping me and kind of like inspiring me to get back into things. So again, that's linked below and thank you for your feedback. But that is all for this video. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you again soon. Happy reading! So this little cat cave back here, so freaking cute, it looks like a cat. I leave it on my bed, and the other day I heard it fall over and I just thought that Casanova kicked it off the bed because I knew that he had been laying by it, this one. And then like 45 minutes later, I was sitting at my desk, and like 45 minutes later I heard a noise, like clawing on my bed, and so I turned around and looked, and he was clawing his way out of the cat cave, which was... <laughs> laying next to my bed, he had fallen, he was in it, and he had fallen with it, and just was like, well, this is what life is now. And he had just went with it. Just like, what a weirdo. Anyway, it's so cute, and I just love it. TJ Maxx, if you're interested. Hi, buddy. Yeah. You like your cave? Oh, okay. Whatever.